There are currently thousands of migrants in Belarus seeking to enter the European Union, mainly by crossing into Poland, Latvia, or Lithuania. Although based on misinformation, their hopes are to either apply for asylum or continue further into Europe to meet family or acquaintances. Now let's take some time to understand this situation's development and the growing list of humanitarian concerns surrounding it. While the situation's severity has intensified in the past months, migrants have been trying to enter the EU via Belarus since the summer of 2021. After the first migrants began arriving in Belarus in June, Latvia was the first country to declare a state of emergency on August 11th. Poland followed on September 2nd, and finally Lithuania on November 10th. These declarations had the immediate effect of increasing security at each country's border with Belarus and even erecting fences and barriers to prevent crossings. The most recent policy development came on December 1st, when the European Commission proposed allowing Poland, Latvia, and Lithuania to suspend certain aspects of European asylum law, which we'll look at shortly. Let's first look at how this situation started and intensified. There is widespread agreement that misinformation about accessing Europe came from Belarusian authorities and reached people mainly in Afghanistan, Syria, and Iraq. Specifically, people aspiring to reach Europe were told they could easily do so by exiting Belarus at unguarded EU borders. Furthermore, travel companies offered convenient packages including flight tickets to Minsk and a tourist visa valid for entering Belarus. Now, migrants are camped in front of heavily fortified EU borders with hardly any basic living necessities. Reasons for this situation are not completely clear, although analysts from the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs are confident that Belarusian authorities manufactured the crisis. Belarus has been facing EU and US sanctions and a lack of recognition of its government since the last year's election, in large part due to a well-founded suspicion of election fraud. UN analysts argue that Belarus may be trying to gain leverage in negotiations with the EU by using migrants to create a border security situation. Further speculation, however, does have some variation and requires more investigation. There are several effects of the current border situation, as well as multiple apparent humanitarian concerns. For the migrants at the border, their well-being is being jeopardized by factors like the environment. As winter approaches, nighttime temperatures go below freezing, which is particularly problematic because of a lack of adequate shelter. Scarcity of both food and non-food items, not to mention the risk of COVID-19 outbreaks, puts many migrants at severe risks. Furthermore, media and humanitarian access to the border on both sides is limited. This means it's difficult to document the situation and hold authorities accountable for their behaviors. Plus, humanitarian and aid interventions are rare and only allowed at the border guard's discretion. Finally, with regard to the European Commission's proposed exemptions to EU asylum law for Poland, Latvia, and Lithuania. One effect would be that these EU countries could detain people who get across the border for up to four months while making a decision about their status. These countries would only have to meet minimum human needs during this period as well. Furthermore, denied asylum seekers would be very quickly deported, whereas normally they can halt their expulsion by filing for an appeal of their asylum decision. The situation's current status is not extremely clear because the border remains largely inaccessible to reporters and aid workers. However, large news sources like the New York Times and The Economist estimated around 20,000 migrants in Belarus as of mid-November. However, the International Organization for Migration's end of November estimate was around 7,000 people. There could be multiple explanations for these different estimates owing to different estimation techniques. We have seen that some migrants trying to enter the EU have begun returning to their origin countries in November. The Iraqi government has been flying its citizens back on a voluntary basis and has repatriated around 1,800 people by the end of November. 
Similarly, although to a lesser extent, the IOM has assisted 44 people with their returns as of the end of November, and at this date was also processing an additional 38 returnees. Keeping up to date on the situation can be done in multiple ways. The UN is consistently publishing updates on its overall news hub at news.un.org, plus on its subsidiary organization's websites such as the Humanitarian Affairs Office's online hub, reliefweb.int. Please feel free to also leave useful resources in the comments section for others to read. I hope you'll share this video to spread awareness and press that thumbs up button to help the YouTube algorithm promote this video to anyone interested. To stay up to date on migration topics, you're also welcome to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.